We're in Beckles at the yacht station and it's uh, October, which is not the sort of time of year I would usually come to the broads. Uh, but COVID 2020 needs must. And uh, for me, the wife, the toddler and two friends, we have booked Antigua 2 from Richardson's of Stalham. And this is our little boat tour. The boat is very much in a lived-in condition. It's by no means perfect, but it gives you an idea of the space and how uh, we've seen the boats. So uh, this here is the fairly spacious master cabin. Double bed, lovely, lovely windows, door to the ensuite, mirror, wardrobe. We missed the wardrobe, didn't know it was there until a few days ago. Um, and even a little settee, which has been an ideal sleeping place for uh, the toddler to sleep. So... This forward cabin, very, very good size. There is a bit of a downfall though, um, and it's hidden by the bedding. If I sort of come over here, the double bed has this headboard that then takes a sharp 45 degree angle turn for the uh, hull of the boat. And that means when I try to sleep on that side of the bed, my feet hang out. I I know there's lots of broad cruisers like this, but that just strikes me as a really odd design choice. Um, so we don't use the headboard end, it's just more of a footboard. And then we sleep at this end where our pillows are free to fall off in the middle of the night. Um, but at least we've got space. Um, on to the master bedroom head, that's the word. So we find in here, actually, a really, really good sized head shower room toilet thing um it, not really much else to say it's got um a regular sort of toilet with the step thing to flush it does have an electric toilet flush so that's quite good um electric shower drain which has caused us some issues more on that later um yeah that's very good size really uh so backing out of there uh, we come through into, well, the wheelhouse. The Antigua 2 um, is uh, an Aquafiber Entrepreneur 38, which is a sliding rooftop, or I'm going to call it a drop top. It's not my preferred style of boat, although we used to use them lots when I was a kid. Um, so the wheelhouse itself, oh, into the blazing sunshine, is, again, really big and spacious. Lots of room. Um, the settee's a bit deceptive because... It's really only big enough for three people to sit at comfortably, five people very cosily, but the boat's rated for seven sleepers, two, four, six, yeah, seven. And so it, the sofa's not big enough for all of us, um, but it does come with two stalls. There's one, the other one we're using to sort of peer over the uh, front of the boat. Um, so it's a good space. It's a brilliant space, but not quite enough seating. Um, one of the stalls was hidden when we first got the boat, and we'll see where that was hidden later. Um, what is there to say in here? The sliding canopy is very heavy. It's a two-man job to, or woman job, you know, not sexist, um, to push it up or down. Uh, the screen is also very heavy. That's another two-person job. Has a sunroof for when you don't want to take the whole canopy off, which we've used. Uh, again, quite weighty, but that, you know, I can do that on my own. Um, on to this area here, the helm, which has got to be the worst helm I've ever used. It looks fine until you sort of bring the camera here. Um, there's absolutely nowhere for your legs to go. I just, I, I don't get it. This chair, if that had been made to swivel, would have been brilliant. You could use it to socialise, add to the number of seats, but it doesn't. It doesn't move at all. So getting into here is a little bit of a, um, of an issue. The curtains are here at the moment because we had the roof down when we arrived and the roof's going down again in a minute um, to get under Beckles old bridge hopefully. Which of course this style of cruiser can do. Uh, it can get under the low bridges given low enough tides and low enough water levels. We'll find out if we can do that in a minute. Um, this is the view from the helm. Uh, pretty good view across to uh, the starboard side. Not a bad view. And of course you know behind also a good view. But uh, looking to port is a definite issue. Yeah, that, that's the view at my head height. If I sort of lean back like this, then I can sort of see what's over there. Um, I mean, that is a bit of a shame. Uh, and then it also, it's, it makes mooring difficult because of the noise of the engine. I can't just poke my head out the window because 
the windows all the way back here. So again, to get out the window, you've got to lean all the way down and back like this. So, um, yeah, not ideal. Dashboard, all sort of fairly familiar features, I would imagine, for most people. Uh, rev counter that sort of gets stuck there for some reason, if everything's off. Um, or temperature, pressure, battery meter. 12 volt plug-in uh, doodah, what's it for everything? Horn, bilge pump, water pump. Uh, standard sort of Morse controller, wheel. I've got to say, it's a very, very good boat to drive if it wasn't so uncomfortable and difficult to get into the helm position. The engine's really nice and responsive. Um, steering, a little bit vague at times. Um, but that's the nature of cruising, really, isn't it? Um, so that's that's this sort of area. I, I thought this was odd because it's sort of been done as a one level throughout except for this area. Um, and then there's steps down here. So there's sort of a corridor, but it's not really a corridor, that takes you down from the master suite over there out to the back. Um, but this is where the TV is. Being a Richardson's boat, it's got Wi-Fi. Um, uh, plenty of storage under there and it goes right back under the gunnels of the boat again most of the boat really well designed um the only sort of issue i guess for us with this area is that you have to have a very very long neck to actually see out of the windows so again where the settee is there you can sit down but you can't really see much um which i think it's probably the nature of this style of boat it, it, you can't have a seat any higher up for when the roof's down, you won't get under the bridges, but you can't actually see over the front and the back of the boat, which makes it a little bit boring for people. This middle point of the video, I'm going to point out uh, three substantial issues that we've had with the boat. Well, two substantial, one sort of, you know, run of the mill. Firstly, uh, so there's the helm, just coming up next to the helm. Up here, very high up, is the uh, operations for the heater. And we've been up here in the past, usually in Easter time, um, so not that much colder really. But we've always found the heaters go really, really hot and keep you almost too warm. Um, like other Richardson's boats that I've seen, uh, it's got a sort of a fake thermostat kind of a thing. So you can adjust how hot you want the temperature. I thought, brilliant. It's not an Eber Spasher one like I've had before. It's this uh, Webasto version. Um, this has a switch. That does absolutely nothing, makes no difference whatsoever. It is just a case of turn this switch all the way around to make it as hot as possible, which I can confirm at this point in the year, late October, it is not very hot at all. Um, we've had to wear lots of extra layers, even during the day, which we really weren't expecting. So this boat is not good for this time of year. I, I kind of feel it's a little disingenuous of Richardson's to be letting this out as late as October, but, you know, this year particularly, they, they've got to make the money back. Um, but the bigger issue we've had, which, and again, I've not had uh, a drop-top boat like this before. So I, I, I know it's not completely sealed. I expect it to be a little bit drafty. But up around here, and I don't know how well I'm going to capture this with the sun, uh, where the canopy meets the screen, um, yesterday, coming across Braden Water and down the Wa Waveney, uh, we had driving rain straight into the boat and the roof just didn't do its job. We had water absolutely pouring in through here. Um, the toddler slipped over the floor there. Now, to uh, Richardson's credit, they apologised and they said, oh, there's nothing they can do about it. They brought us loads of extra towels because we're expecting more rain tomorrow to help mop up. Um, and the, the staff at Richardson's, as always, could not be more helpful. Um, but on this particular boat, and they even said, actually, for most of these sliding top cruisers, in the real driving rain, that is a problem. I guess if you're aware it's going to be a problem and you come with the right gear, fair enough. So a friend of mine who's with us sort of said, well, why isn't that a warning on the, on the boat? Or let me let you know the boatyard, or if you get driving rain right into the front of you, it's going to happen. Fair enough, I suppose. Um, the third thing, which again, Richardson's came out fixed, no problem whatsoever, was a really weird thing where you go for a shower in the front shower, you use the little electric pump to get out the water and what started to happen was uh, down here is the rear head oh I think I might just cover the camera there sorry here's the rear head little thing and uh, well it was all bubbling up into here really bizarre man from Richardson's came out fiddled with the impeller I think he said all good so 
I expect there to be problems with boats, certainly boats that are 35 years old. I think it's par for the course. It's how well the boat yard deal with them, and they have been first class, absolutely first class. There is a fourth issue, which I'll talk about in a second, which I think just shows how good Richardson's are. Anyways, this is the rear head then as part of our tour. Um, much smaller than the forward head. Uh, now we're in the front suite as I said we've definitely got the better deal out of this our friends who've got this uh, toilet and the small cabin definitely got the raw end of the deal um, this shower really uh, if you're slightly on the larger side you're never going to fit in there to have a shower you'll have noticed that I've not gone in there to film this bit because it is just so small um, really it's just because where the side of the boat is there's plenty of room underneath the gunnel um, and to sit down and use the toilet it's fine um, but just for a shower room, it's a little bit small. Um, so we've been using the front one. So that's easy enough. Uh, I'll ping that back. As we go down to the back of the boat, we come into this really large, uh, and I mean really, really large galley area. Um, sorry, the washing up's not been done. I'll get me in trouble. Um, gas stove looks virtually new. Um, sink area, all you know, nice and clean, looks like new cupboards. Uh, little space to hide things there. Fridge. Uh, a brand new microwave for this trip. I know that because the one we had started smoking. Again, Richardson's out straight away brought us a brand new microwave on the last week of the proper season. I'm so impressed. Well done. Um, so, yeah, that's that really. Um, these aren't bags of rubbish. These allude to the fourth problem we've had. Uh, in the rear cabin, we've had a window leak. It happens. It's one of those things. Again, it's how it is dealt with. And at 8 p.m. last night, we had a sudden knock at the back door as two Richardson's engineers showed up. Really apologetic. Siliconed up the window. No more leaks, uh, but didn't have any more bedding with them. Uh, we managed to make it work last night. We're now in Beckles. That's a good hour's drive from Stalham. And this morning, they come out to us again to drop off bedding, extra towels. Just absolutely fantastic. Um, We'll pause there then, and then we'll have a look at the galley, the rear deck, and um, maybe the outside. A change of clothes, as it's a different day, and we're chugging up the Waveney for the last part of the boat review. I wanted to get this part on the move uh, for a reason you'll see in a second. I'm actually in the rear bedroom at the moment, um, which says on the plan it could be two singles or a double. I'm going to turn the camera around and show you what it's like in double mode. The, I mean, yes, there's bedding and stuff there, but that... that the whole room becomes a bed. There's, there's no no space. I'm literally standing in the only space. Um, so if you are going to use it as a double, it's literally a room for a bed and not anything else. Um, but you can have it as two singles. Um, that's that. Just for the sake of completion, this is what that rear cabin looks like when it's set up for two bunks rather than just one double. So you have got more space. But... I mean, these bunks, they're not ideally sized for adults. Here, um, well, this towel is where we've had a leak, um, which Richardson's have sorted with copious amounts of silicon. Um, but that's that. So, OK, um, we're now going to go back out here into the galley. Earplugs on, everyone. <laughs> so, you've seen the big galley already. What you can now hear is the very loud engine noise here at the back. And a Mrs Clark. Uh, but it is, it's absolutely a massive size galley. You can have a dinner dance in here, I reckon. Um, there is one slight oddity, which on the plan looked like a really good idea, but bearing in mind this is a boat for seven people, um, down here where the bin is, if I move the bin, don't worry, toddlers don't come with the boat. What we have here is a table that comes up. Seemed like a brilliant idea on the plan, but how many people are you actually going to get around that table? I'd say two, maybe three at the most. Well, it is only two because it only came with two stalls. Incidentally, if you need a stall and you can't find it, it might have been hidden under there because that's where our second stall was. Ah, thank you for that. Um, and actually, here's a good point to point out the slightly strange collection of lights. Some of them have been upgraded to these nice bright lights, but some of them are still these old rectangular dodgy jobs. So. The new kitchen is lovely and there's lots of nice things, but there are parts of this boat that make it feel a little unloved. So I put my life jacket on for the last part of the video to film this really massive rear sun deck. I mean, look at this space! 
massive. But um, as our two friends discovered yesterday, if you want to sit out here and have a conversation, you've literally got to shout to each other. Underneath that locker is the main end, well, the engine. And it makes a right old racket. Out the back here are some things to consider. Um, there we go. Uh, these are really big steps to get on and off the rear of the boat. Um, and to be fair, even the side, if you're going off the side, you need to use the steps. Um, they're really big and there's no handrails. So for people with limited um, mobility, this probably isn't the boat for them. Uh, one other thing to think about uh, is the door to go back in. These doors have been amazing. The views you get out the back, absolutely first class. The actual layout and design of this boat is fantastic. There's just a few things that make it a little bit difficult. Um, but another thing for people with limited mobility, these doors are not like sliding doors at home. Uh, they are really heavy, as I will now incompetently show you. So it's now uh, first thing in the morning at St Bennett's Abbey, and uh, this is the outside of Antigua 2. A uh, bit more of a view. Um, there you go. Um, what I quite like, and I've noticed on pretty much all the Richardson's boats, is they put their life ring at the front of the boat. Because if you're doing a man overboard, that's the direction you need to be approaching the pit year uh, cash team. So I think that's very sensible. Lots of other life rings seem to be towards the back. So um, yeah, well thought out that. Um, outside, nothing particularly remarkable. I mean, I guess the, the canopy is kind of the, the main event which we're going to take down in the minute to get underneath London Bridge. Um, the forward screen definitely takes two people to slot out and lower because it's quite heavy. The canopy, definitely two people. Ideally, you could use three people, but there are three people. You can get it back on your own, that's easy enough. It's getting it back up again. Although, with a bit of practice, the wife and I are down to 30 seconds for the whole routine to get it back up again. But that's after lots of practice. Um, I think there's only one other thing I needed to mention, which was lights on board the boat um, in this main cabin area, because you can't put any lights in the roof. They're all around the sort of sides, and um, particularly the bright ones either end up blinding you or you end up sitting in front of and then everyone goes dark. So, yeah, overall, you know, you a bad day on the broads is better than a good day in the office. This boat has been okay, but it's probably not on my hire again list. I certainly wouldn't advise it for anyone who um, has some mobility issues um, <laughs> because they'll never get into the cockpit, they'll never get into the boat in the first place, they'll never move the sliding roof, um, they'll never get the back door open. But it has got some really impressive space on the inside. You know, we've not been struggling for space during the day, but the bed time spaces, I mean, that, that rear cabin is just really poorly designed. Um, I guess if you can use it and only use the front cabin, there's only two of you, plus perhaps one person, one child in the side bunk, maybe you're right, maybe it's okay for a family. Um, but it's, yeah, it's not on my hire again list. So I hope this uh, review of Antigua 2 has been useful to you. It's very similar to some other boats. I think uh, Tobago, uh, Highland Gem. I think there's one at Herbert Woods. Uh, so hopefully that will help you as well. Uh, until then, happy sailing. I just thought it would be good to add into the review at the end here, just a little shot of the uh, boat with its canopy down. Uh, and to be fair, if you can guarantee this was going to be a fair weather holiday, this boat probably improved by double, I should think. Um, but rain coming into the front, and it happened twice, uh, that's not ideal. Um, Hey-ho, there you go. That's the boat with the lid down.